Good morning, boys and girls. I'm Eleanor Hawkins, and welcome to Tell a Story Time. You know, this next Thursday is a very special day. It's Valentine's Day, and I've always loved to make Valentine's, and I wonder if any of you boys and girls have ever tried to make them. It's lots of fun. I brought along something this morning to show you. It is a piece of paper that I folded. I folded twice, and then I cut a little heart here, little heart here, and then I just went in and out. And over here, I tried to make a flower. And then when you open it all up, if I can do it very carefully, look, I have some a, a valentine, really, and if you do it out of red paper, it even looks more like a valentine. But see the hearts? And then at the very bottom, you can write your verse and your name. This is lots of fun. And also, you can buy at the stores different hearts that are like this doily, you see. And if you put that on some white paper, that little doily heart almost makes your valentine for you. And another valentine I brought along is this one that a little boy made for me and mailed it to tell a story time. And you see, it's a book and it says here, to my valentine on the spine. And then he did a heart. And then you see it's all made of wood. Here he even made the pages. Yes, this is a volume of good wishes on Valentine's Day. Oh, boys and girls, it can be lots of fun. And so sometime this weekend, why don't you try to make some Valentines and have a good time? And now it's time for me to read to you one of my very favorite stories. It's entitled Cinderella. Once there was a girl who was as good as she was beautiful. She lived with her stepmother and her two stepsisters, and they were cruel to her because she was more beautiful than they were. They made her scrub and clean all day long and gave her only rags to wear. At night, she slept in the chimney corner. Because she was always covered with ashes, they called her Cinderella. One day, the king's son announced that, it was that he was going to give a ball. Cinderella's two stepsisters were invited. They began to choose silks and laces for their ball gowns and jewels and feathers for their hair. They talked of nothing else but how fine they would look at the palace ball. You can fix our hair for us, they said to Cinderella. She fixed their hair in different ways and did her best to make them look beautiful. But no matter how hard she tried, Cinderella still looked more beautiful than they, even in her rags. This made the stepsisters angry. Well, why don't you go to the ball too, Cinderella, they asked. The poor girl looked down at her rags and said, oh, how I wish I could go. And then they laughed at her and said, imagine a cinder wench at the prince's ball. With tears in her eyes, Cinderella watched her stepsisters get into their coach and depart for the ball. Just the same, I wish I could go, she whispered to herself. At that very moment, she heard a voice behind her saying, and so you shall, my child. Cinderella turned around and there stood a lovely lady with a crown on her head. I am your fairy godmother, she said, and I shall prepare you for the prince's ball. First, run into the garden and get me the biggest pumpkin you can find. Cinderella ran into the garden and brought back the pumpkin. The fairy waved her wand over the pumpkin. It changed instantly into a splendid red coach with gold trimmings. Now we need six horses, said the fairy godmother. Run and fetch the mouse trap. Cinderella brought the mouse trap back and there were six lively little mice in the trap. The fairy waved her wand and the mice became six prancing white horses with tassels on their heads. Now we need a coachman, said the fairy. Bring the rat trap. Cinderella brought the rat trap with one big rat sitting in it. 
The fairy waved her wand and the rat became a coachman with a coachman's hat and a plume on his head. He jumped up on the coach and took the reins in his hand. We need footmen too, said the fairy. Six will do. Run and fetch six green lizards. Cinderella brought the lizards and the fairy waved her wand immediately. There were six footmen dressed in purple livery, trimmed with gold. There, said the fairy, are you happy now? But my clothes, said Cinderella, looking down at her rags. The fairy godmother laughed gently and touched Cinderella with her wand. Cinderella's rags fell off and she was dressed in a magnificent ball gown of golden silk. There were diamonds in her hair and on her feet twinkled two lovely little glass slippers. Now when Cinderella arrived at the ball, everyone whispered, Oh, what a beautiful princess. I wonder who she is. Even the two stepsisters did not recognize Cinderella, but they were very envious. Now Cinderella remembered what the fairy had told her. Be home at midnight. If you don't, everything will turn back as it was. And as she danced with the prince, she thought of that. The prince danced with no one but her. Indeed, Cinderella and the prince were the handsomest couple on the dance floor, and the prince never left Cinderella's side. When supper was served, he picked out the choicest fruits and cakes for her. He took Cinderella by the hand and led her to the king and queen and told them that he loved her. Now Cinderella was so happy that she quite forgot about the time. And suddenly she heard the clock strike the first note of 12 midnight. Quickly she curtsied to the prince and then fled from the room and out of the castle. She hurried down the marble steps to her coach. Just as she was about to step into the coach, the last note of 12 sounded. The coach vanished before her eyes and there on the ground lay a pumpkin. The rat and the mice scurried off and the lizards crawled away in the dust. Cinderella stood there, dressed in her rags again. The lovely little glass slippers were all that remained, but Cinderella had lost one of the slippers on the marble steps when she hurried down. She limped home on the other slipper and reached the chimney corner before her stepsisters returned. The next morning, everyone was awakened by the sound of a bugle. A messenger from the palace called out the news that the prince had found the glass slipper. He was going to take it to every house in the kingdom until he found its owner. When he found the girl, she would become his bride. All the young ladies in the kingdom were excited. They hurried to put on their best dresses for the prince's visit. But Cinderella had nothing to wear but her rags. The prince went to every house looking for the beautiful girl. At last he came to Cinderella's house. Cinderella's stepsisters pushed her aside in their hurry to try on the slipper. I think it will fit me, said the older girl. But she could not even squeeze her toes into the tiny slipper. The younger stepsister had no better luck when she tried to put the slipper on. Please let me try, said Cinderella in a shy little voice. You, cried the stepsisters, go back to your cinders and ashes where you belong. But the prince looked for a long time at Cinderella's lovely face. He knew that he had seen it before. Well, let her try, said the prince. Cinderella slipped her foot into the glass slipper easily. Then, to everyone's amazement, she drew the other slipper out of her pocket and put it on her other foot. At that moment, the fairy godmother appeared and with her wand touched Cinderella. There she stood, dressed again in the splendid ball gown. 
The prince gazed at her with joy and then knelt down at her feet. And then he said, This is my own true bride. Oh, a great wedding was held, and Cinderella was so happy that she forgave her stepsisters. She took them to live with her at the palace, where they married two lords. And boys and girls, they all lived happily ever after. And that is the story of Cinderella. And now stay tuned, and we'll be back in just a moment to show you books from the shelves of your public library. Boys and girls, I brought along some books and some Valentines to show you this morning. And the very first one is the book entitled Valentine's Day. And it has a very pretty cover, doesn't it? Inside it tells us the whole history of Valentine's Day through many words and some very pretty uh, illustrations as you can see. Here this is a whole chapter, Valentine Symbols and the Story of Cupid. And all the way through, we can learn all about this wonderful day, Valentine's Day. Our next book is a very old one. And as you can see, it is a book that has a beautiful gold heart on it. And inside, it tells us that this is a history of Valentine's. And I use my Valentine bookmark to mark a page here. And this is a very, very old valentine that you can see here in the colored illustration. And it was made in England in 1850. Valentine's Day is an old, old holiday. And here is another one that was done in 1850, and it has a beautiful lace border. Yes, Valentine's Day is a very, very old holiday. And this book is a history of Valentine Day. And then we have this book entitled, Let's Celebrate Valentine's Day. It's a whole book of how to make your own Valentine's. And you can see here it gives us patterns and it gives us even some little verses to put on our Valentine's. And all the way through, you can find ideas for making your very own Valentine's. Yes, let's celebrate Valentine's Day. And then I'd like to show you this book. This is Apollonia's Valentine. And this is an old story that is about the, a, Pen a Pennsylvania Dutch little boy and girl and how they have a big contest at school and they try to make the most beautiful Valentines. And this is an exciting story, and it tells some of the heritage of the Pennsylvania Dutch people, Apollonia's Valentine. And then I brought along some Valentines that I've collected. This says, an old-fashioned wish. And you can see that it's an old-fashioned reproduction of a Valentine. And inside it says, an old-fashioned wish is always in style when it comes from the heart and is sent with a smile. Happy Valentine's Day. And our next one is a reproduction of an old one, as you can see. And this is a Victorian Valentine. And then this one has beautiful lace on it, as you can see. And inside it says, a Valentine card with an old-fashioned touch to tell you you're special and thought of so much. Happy Valentine's Day. And then this is a very special reproduction that not only has lace, but it also has a beautiful satin ribbon. Boys and girls, you know, we can have a wonderful time addressing our Valentines and remembering all of our good friends. And I know it's a very special day at school. 
So have a good time addressing your Valentines and choosing just the right one for the right person. And boys and girls, any of the books that I showed you this morning can be borrowed from any of the libraries in the Craven Pamlico Carbridge Regional Library System. Be sure and visit your library sometime this week and check out some very good books on your library card. And now stay tuned and we'll be back with another story in just a moment. Now, boys and girls, get very comfortable and ready to listen to the story of the Tasty Pasty Valentine. Little Gray Mouse looked around his cozy little home. Oh, I am the lucky one, he thought. He was lucky. His little hole in the wall was just right. The house he lived in was just right, too. People lived in the house, of course a mother and a father, a boy and a girl. But Little Gray Mouse did not mind that. They are nice, quiet people, Mouse told his friends. They don't give me much trouble. And they did have a fine kitchen. A fella could always pick up a little snack at bedtime. Now Little Gray Mouse lived in a hole in the wall of the boy's room. Now that was lucky too for the boy left such good crumbs. Cake crumbs and bread crumbs and with peanut butter. Oh, yum, yum. But sometimes the boy would stay in his room right in Gray Mouse's way. That was the trouble right now. Mouse wanted to go down to the kitchen. He wanted to go down very, very much for he could smell cheese. Lovely, lovely, delicious cheese. But the boy was in the room, and so was the girl. They were sitting at the table working. Well, why don't they go out to play? Little Gray Mouse thought crossly. But the boy and the girl went on working. They had red paper and white paste and scissors. Snip, snip, snip. They cut up the red paper. Swoosh, swoosh, swoosh. They put paste on the red paper, here and there. Oh dear, said the girl, something's wrong. The ones I make look funny. Well, mine look kind of funny too, said the boy. I can't make them look right. The girl looked as if she wanted to cry. Oh dear, she said, I especially wanted my valentines to be very pretty. Well, let's take, let's get them done anyway, said the boy, and then we can go out to play. Yes, indeed, thought the little gray mouse. Do get done. Do go away. How he did want to get to that cheese. At last, the boy and the girl stood up, and they put the red papers on the floor. I wish they looked better, said the girl. Come on, said the boy. They'll dry soon. Maybe they will look better then. And they ran out to play. Little Gray Mouse popped out of his hole. He was about to scamper down to the kitchen. Suddenly, he stopped. Sniff, sniff, sniff. Ooh, what a wonderful smell. Sniff, sniff. Why, it came from the red papers on the floor. It was the wonderful smell of white paste. Little Gray Mouse ran to the red papers and began to nibble at them. Nibble, nibble, nibble. Oh, delicious. He nibbled all around the red papers, in and out and around and around. Nibble, nibble, he went, wherever there was that wonderful taste of paste. Best meal I've had around here in a long, long time, he said happily. 
Soon he was so full that he did not even go down to the kitchen. Instead, he went back to his cozy little mouse house for a good after nibble nap. Little gray mouse was still sleeping when the boy and the girl returned. They ran into the room and then they stopped in astonishment. Look at our valentines, cried the boy. Oh, why, they're beautiful, cried the girl. She jumped up and down and clapped her hands. I wonder who did this for us, asked the boy. They look as if they've been nibbled, nibbled. The boy and the girl looked at each other and they began to laugh. I know who it was, said the boy. So do I, said the girl. And we must say thank you. Soon after that, little gray mouse woke up from his nap. Something wonderful woke him in the middle of a dream. Sniff, sniff. He had never smelled anything so good before, and he came from the boy's room. Gray Mouse ran out of his hole as fast as he could. What's this? said the mouse in surprise. And there in the middle of the room was some red paper, and in the middle of the red paper was a piece of cheese, and there on the cheese was some paste some delicious, wonderful paste. And you know, boys and girls, there were words on the red paper and they said, be our Valentine. But little gray mouse didn't care about words, cheese and paste. It's not often that you can eat cheese and paste at the same time. Oh, what a day, he said happily. What a lovely, lovely day. And the boy and the girl loved the valentines that the little gray mouse had helped them make. And that, boys and girls, is the story of the tasty, pasty valentines. And now I will be back in just a moment with another story just for you. boys and girls, I'm going to read you The Legend of St. Valentine. The 14th day of February celebrates the feast of a holy man named Valentine who was a Christian priest. He shared his faith with others in the pagan land of Rome until the day a group of soldiers took him from his home. He was jailed and put to death at the pagan king's command for performing Christian marriages the king had ordered banned. But before he died, he wrote to each young couple he had wed and contained in every letter were these last words that he said, Grieve not for me, instant rejoice that you are man and wife, for love's a priceless treasure that's more precious still than life. And since then, valentines are sent upon that day each year as a sign of love and caring to the one whom you hold dear. And of course, that day is always the 14th day of February. And boys and girls, I have time enough to read you this poem. It's a Valentine castle. There's an old castle where once lived a king. Fairies now live there and birds nest and sing. And once every year on Valentine's Day, there's hustle and bustle for magic whole sway. Yes, Cupid is busy. He knows from the start, wherever he aims, love springs from the start. There's ribbon and lace, sweet verses galore. Put them together, they're off to your door. The castle resounds with sentiments old, sweeter they grow, more often retold. Bluebirds and fairies, forget-me-nots too, sing it and say it, I love you, I do. The castle is yours forever and nigh. What could be sweeter 
than Valentine's Day. And boys and girls, our Castle Valentine is wishing each and every one of you a wonderful Valentine's Day from Tell a Story Time.